the Maple Leafs are failures. They can't beat bad teams this season. They can't win a playoff round. And it's basically the same team rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic every season just to get to the playoffs and fail. Now, I know we started poorly, and sure, we can rifle off five, six straight wins, and everybody forgets about this. It's happy times, but let's be honest. We're going to get to the playoffs. We're going to lose first round, and it's going to be the same song and dance all over again. So we can either act and do something now, or we can sit on our hands and hope for the best. And currently, I, I, I don't like this direction. I, I haven't for years. If, you, if you're a fan of the show and you're in my Discord and you know me, I'm a huge Leafs fan and I've always been against Kyle Dubas. I just, I just hate his cap management and we'll get to that. But I really, really never liked the direction of the Toronto Maple Leafs ever. I didn't. And let's just let's just jump into it. We can evaluate some options here on how to proceed with the Leafs. And the first option is fire Keith, I guess. What are you gonna do? You're gonna fire Keith? Okay, cool. Then what? Who are you gonna bring in? Doesn't change the players. Like is Justin Hall suddenly gonna stop being bad? No. Kerfoot? No. Are the top players going to get going and wake up? Maybe, maybe. But will they come if come playoff time if we bring in Barry Trotz or, or somebody like that? Everybody's calling for Barry Trotz. Like, he had his dream job in Winnipeg, and he said he, he needed to take a season off. Is he coming for the Leafs? I don't know. Who are you going to bring in? It, it, like, who are you going to bring in that isn't that this group isn't going to fail? They failed. Mike Babcock, different situation, but... He couldn't get them over the edge. One of the most winning coaches right there couldn't get them over the edge. Couldn't get them over the hump. Now Sheldon Keefe seems he can't do it. And then you're going to bring in somebody else to just coach this current group? Get him over the edge? I don't think Keefe's the problem. But again, you know, this group here, they, they just, they don't, I, I, like... They could come out and say all they like, oh, you know, uh, we're super confident, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you're super confident, then why don't you get the job done? And as well, Keith has to backtrack, not to hurt anybody's feelings. He has to go out saying, our star players aren't performing. And then he got he has to go out and he has to backtrack it like, oh, I, I had to clarify what I meant. To, like, Dude, just own it. Just own it. He benched Marner and then he started playing Marner again. Like, he's not in control of this team either. And no matter who they bring in, I don't, like, unless they have a strong iron will. And I think maybe, I think maybe Tortorella, like, I know he's a flyer, but he might have been the guy to have that well will. And Trotz, maybe too, to be like, you make a mistake, Marner, you're sitting, you're riding the bench. Matthews, you too. I think maybe they had, they have that, 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 that will and that, confidence to say you know what i'm a great coach and you know you're not playing well you're gonna ride the bench but it doesn't matter they're like no matter what coach they bring in if they could if they can't bring in a trots great but no matter what coach they bring in i i, I feel like it'll yield the same results because it's the same group it's the same group option two is a trade and talking about the same group okay cool let's make let's make a deal all right who are we trading here Everybody calls for the big, one of the big five, I guess now. Uh, Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Nylander, and Riley. Okay, you're not moving, you're not moving probably Matthews. You can't move Tavares, and you're not moving Riley because he, he's, he's locked up forever too. He's got a no move. Okay, then who? So you're left with Nylander and Marner. Okay, we're going to trade our best contract, Nylander. Then what? What are you gonna get in the what? Are, what are you gonna get regular season right now? Nothing. Nothing significant. Maybe at the deadline you can get some sort of package, but 
who would want to flip a, a, an actual piece right now for William Nylander? Who's going to who's gonna make that deal? It's like Jacob Chikrin. You're not trading Nylander for Chikrin. What's the point? Why would Arizona want to do that? They're trying to get Connor Bedard right now. Doesn't make sense. I don't know what deal, what hockey move would make sense to get rid of Nylander. And if we make that hockey move, I feel like we're going to lose the deal. Right? I don't feel like it matters. Make a trade, don't. Trade the top five, don't. You know? And then what? Okay, you're going to trade pieces around the team. What 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 pieces? You're going to move Brody, probably your best defenseman. I don't think so. You're going to move young, cheap contracts, Andy and Logren. No. Can you move Muzzin and Murray? No. Nobody's taking them. Dennis Morgan. Kerfoot. Okay. Oof. What are you getting back? Justin Hall. Okay. Just to get rid of him, maybe. But then you're going to have to call up Marlies, who are probably even worse. That crawl guy had a brutal whiff. Brutal whiff yesterday. Led to a breakaway. Awful. Doesn't matter. You can make a panic move. Or not. You know. And again, Marner, the player I didn't mention in the top five. It's it's eleven million. Who could who could take that right now? Nobody. Nobody. Make a trade. Don't. It won't make much of a difference. I don't know what you're getting back. And if you say, say Jacob Chikrin, like uh, re-energize the blue line, it would solidify it more. Cool. Okay. Another left-handed shot. But again, what are you giving up? <laughs> like what? You're going to give up Nick Robertson. You're going to give up Matthew Nyes. That's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take. Another first. Let's keep handing out the firsts. That's what it's going to take. It's not going to be... William Nylander or, 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 you know, Timothy Lilgren, you know, they're trying to lose. So they want, they want futures. They don't want present. They don't even like, they don't want like some of the trades they've made. It's all for future. That's what they want. They want future. We we're going to give up ours, our cheap ELC deals that we need now because we're so cap constrained. So, there you go. Can you make a trade? Probably not. And I guess the last thing, which I, the option I like, is the regime change. And what I mean regime change is not just Dubis. I think Shanahan, the Shanna plan, has failed. Um, you know, some people talk about the mistakes Lou made when he was here, Nikita Zaitsev's deal, Patrick Marlowe's deal. And how Dubis needed to clean it up. Well, you know, who ultimately signed off on everything? And that's the president. And who's the president? Brendan Shanahan. He saw the transition from cleaning house with Nonis. He hired Dubis until he found Lou. And then Lou went back into Dubis. He was there for that entire stretch. He oversaw everything. And he's ultimately responsible for what's going on on the ice and you know Lou made some mistakes for sure he made some some questionable decisions in the draft for sure I think Dubas is a better drafter but Dubas has made some worse deals I think there hasn't been a good transition here from Lou to Dubas and now you can't blame Lou anymore because the, the issues that he created are in the past and now Dubis, this is officially Dubis' team. Like, it's a Dubis team. Dubis signed those deals. Everything you see is Dubis, right? So I think it starts from the top, and then you bring in a new president, and then you replace Dubis. I think that's the way to go. And then whoever replaces Dubis gets to bring in their own coach. I think that's how you operate. And as for who might step in, I have no idea. I have no idea who could come in and fix whatever is going on with the Leafs right now. No idea. Like, all the best managers, like Steve, Steve Eiserman would be great. But, again, 
Like, he's not coming here. Who's, co who's coming to fix the Leafs? I don't know. I have no idea. You're going to have to find another team builder, like some young kid or whatever. I don't know if there's any experienced management that could step in and, and, do, and fix what's going on with the Leafs right now. I just, I don't. I really don't. And talk about the problems. I just want to talk about some of this regime here. Under Dubas specifically, if you can, if, if they're going to keep Shanahan because he's made the playoff season after season or whatever, okay. But I, at least, at the very least, Dubas has to go. And here's some of his deals, okay. So Jake Muzzin brought him in. He was good for like three years. Great. But now it's a brutal contract. You know, they signed him 5.6-ish million, you know. They got rid of three useful pieces. Sean Dursey's coming into his own right now. Um, Grundstrom plays. Bjornfoot plays. They're, they're useful players. Three ELC deals, three depth players that all play right now for Jake Muzzin. Okay. Well, you can't really get too mad at this one because he gave you three years. And I guess he was supposed to put us over the edge. You, could, you can't blame Dubas for the contract, the length. And not getting out of it as sooner, right? Uh, to clear that cap. But, you know, now he's on LTIR. I don't know what the future holds for him. I wish him the best. He's always been a good trooper. Gritty guy. But, you know, neck injuries are serious. I don't know uh, what the future holds for Jake Muzzin. And honestly, I, 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 I just wish him good health for his family. The next deal was to get out of a Lou deal, Patrick Marlowe. And I want to talk a little bit about this one. We gave up Seth Jarvis to get rid of Patrick Marlowe. And the 13th pick, or it was the 13th pick, right? So Seth Jarvis would have looked great in a Leafs uniform. We don't know if Dubas drafts Jarvis, first of all. But still, it's a high-end ELC deal that we possibly could have had on the Leafs. And, you know, instead, there he goes to clear the cap and everybody forgets why we had to trade Marlowe. And this is why, okay, we had to get rid of Marlowe to retain Kapanen and Janssen who were then signed right after this deal. Okay. Because we wanted to protect the threat of offer sheets for these two. And guess what? Bang right there. Kapanen and Janssen next season gone. Gone. And you and at the time they signed, you probably could have got more for them than they ended up getting. And honestly, for Kapanen, they got quite a bit, right? They got quite a bit. Um, for Janssen, they got they got Joey Anderson, who is is just an AHLer. But this is what we did: we got rid of Marlowe to keep these two, and then we traded him a year later for nothing. Could have traded them while their value was higher, but instead we need to bite the bullet, get rid of depth, and get nothing back that currently plays for the Leafs. So everybody says the Marlowe deal had to happen, and I don't understand why some treat, uh, teams trade first-round picks to get rid of their mistakes, because honestly, sometimes it's just better biting the bullet. And it's like, oh, we got to win now. We got to win now. We need the cap now, so we got to win now. But... Were they ready to win is the question. Have they been ready to win? I think the worst thing that could have happened to the Leafs is beating the Capitals. I think they needed at least two more years of, of, of accumulating high picks and learning. Instead, they came in right away. They won, and we had this hopeful vision, and then it just start, it started spiraling. Rebuild was accelerated, and I think that hurt the Leafs. Because you end up doing things like that. Ugh, I don't even want to talk about this one. We all know it's horrible. Kadri for Barry and Kerfoot. This is a fireable offense right here alone. Awful. Awful. Goes out. Point of game player. Stanley Cup champion. Now on Calgary. He was 4.5 million. And you had that one, two, three with 
Matthews, Tavares, and Kadri that other teams would never have. And instead, you send Kadri over to help Nathan McKinnon, that one-two punch. And the thing is, too, you could have moved Kadri up and down the lineup as well. You could have started him on the third line, and if things got desperate, you could have moved him up. And they moved him to get Kerfoot, who is worse, makes a mill less. Like, it, did it really matter too much? And Tyson Berry obviously was horrible, but you could argue at the time, he's not what the Leafs needed. They needed a defenseman. They needed a right-hand shot. But he's not the guy the Leafs needed. Absolutely not. If they did this deal for TJ Brody, would have looked better. He ended up getting him anyways. But this is horrendous. I, I can't bear to look at this one. Mason Marchman for Gino Mulgan over there. I guess you could say nobody knew what Mason Marchman would turn into, but he's he's the kind of player we need. That that's that big sandpaper can chip in offensively and now we got like five foot nine dennis morgan who's who's in and out of the lineup like i don't know here's our trade deadline from a few years ago here nick felino was brought in to push the leaps over the edge and get him that first round series win he got hurt but again when you trade a first round pick it better work and again, that just guts our depths. Guts our depth. Six here and there. David Riddich for a third. Didn't really play much, and when he did, he played horrible. Picks, here you go. Kyle Dubas throwing out the picks. He loves to give away picks. Great draft. Great at drafting. But loves to give away the picks. Loves to give away the picks. And Nick, Fel Nick Felino, obviously, hurt. They didn't really do much for us, but at the end of the day, it's your job to bring in players that, you know, will help you get over the edge. That's what Dubas did. He thought Nick Foligno was the guy he needed, but we lost to Montreal, the worst team in the playoffs at the time. When we could have gone on a run through that, uh, that Canadian division, but nope. 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 This is one of my favorite deals Dubas has made. You know, Jared McCann looks great in a Leafs uniform. Incredible player. Unbelievable. Gave up virtually nothing for him. Wow, what a great deal. Jared McCann scoring 30 for the Leafs. Unbelievable. Love Jared McCann. But wait, no. No, no. We decide to protect Justin Hall. Leave McCann and Kerfoot unprotected. And guess which player we lost? Jared McCann. The best player out of everybody here. At the time, he was the best player, too. At the time, he was the best player, in my opinion. But Dubas makes this incredible deal just to lose him. Because he wants to keep one or the other, Kerfoot or, or McCann. But you could have protected both. Let Justin Hall go. Right? And, you know, you would have been better off. You would have had more offense. McCann, 30 goals, depth scoring. He's exactly what we need right now. Exactly. He could have moved up and down the lineup. He could have played center. Exactly what the Leafs need. Great depth. Nope. Justin Hall. Love him. Got to keep him. And now he's garbage. This one is just a highlight. Labushkin was good for the Leafs, but it's just a highlight, like the mistakes that Dubas has made. Right? Nick Ritchie right here. 3.75. He got sent down, but he was signed to like a 2.75 deal. He got sent down. That was his AHL number. Um... You know, it, it like we gave up a second. It's just showing, it's showcasing that we just love to hand out the picks in order to get rid of mistakes. Sure, we got Labushkin back and he was good, but at the end of the day, we're left with nothing but, and we're left without a second round pick. So, 
down the road second round pick and who knows that 2025 second round pick it could be good could be in the it could be in the 30s by if, if matthews decides to leave so that's a whole nother video giordano just more picks handed out 2022 2023 gone third gone Great at drafting, Dubis, when he has the picks. He'll probably just move down again, accumulate more picks. That's what he does. Loves to give them away, but, but you know, and loves to accumulate. It just doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. I love Giordano. Great player. He's old. He's old. And I love the fact that he signed for the Leafs cheaper, but I would have loved him on a third pairing. Instead, he has to play top flight minutes. Just. More picks gone. More. Just just keep giving them away. And again, another another example. Sure, we moved down to get rid of an awful beat deal, but this just highlights that he had to get rid of his own mistakes. Sure, Lou made mistakes. He signed Marlowe. He signed Zaitsev to that ridiculous deal. Sure, he made mistakes. But Dubas has made his own fair share of mistakes. Some signing players, right? And... Although this one looks better to get to get out of, you know, moving down a few spots just to just to, you know, uh, get out of the Mrazic deal. Great, great job. But. You know, you, you just you just keep making mistakes and you got to keep trading, trading around uh, to get out of them. And this first round pick here. You know, you could have traded, if you wanted to trade down anyways, you could have accumulated maybe a, a third or a fourth to drop that many spots. Instead, we trade the first just to get rid of the cap. So, oh, whoops. And this is the cherry on top right here. Matt Murray for nothing, but we he doesn't play and he's not good and he gets hurt. So... Got a third out of it. Great. 2023. Nice. Should have got a second or a first. You should have got a first. To be honest with you, you should have got a first. We traded Marlowe. One year left of Marlowe and got a first. Instead, we're retaining, like, we only get 25% retention. Okay, sure. Maybe that downgrades it to a second. But come on. Ottawa got away with one here. Ottawa got away with one here. And then we talk about these these players here, the big five. They currently accumulate forty eight million of the cap. All right, forty eight million. So when you accumulate this much money, the argument was made to me is you better show up when it matters. Leon Draisaitl and Connor McDavid show up when it matters, but it's been proven time and time again that these guys do not show up when it matters. They can't win a playoff round. They'll get you regular season success. They'll put up their points. They'll do their thing. But when it comes to the playoffs and the pressure pack moment, they falter, they can't produce, and they can't win a game. Okay? They can't win you when it matters. So when you do this kind of thing, when you have these kind of players, you need depth pieces to surround them better, right? And the salary cap is 82.5. You're left with this many this much cap, 34 million, 34.5 ish left to surround these players to help them when they falter, when it matters. You bring in other guys that can play to that level, and the Leafs just haven't been able to surround them. And, you know, it's like, oh, if they showed up when it mattered, they'd get the job done. Okay, sure. But, you know, in that series against Tampa Bay who scored when it mattered it wasn't Kucherov it wasn't Stamkos it wasn't Palat you know who it was it wasn't Point it wasn't Hedman it wasn't even Sorelli it was Nick Paul Nick Paul third liner scored when it mattered our third line is Kerfoot do you trust Nick Nicholas Kerfoot the score when it matters? It's Alexander Kerfoot. Wow, he's that irrelevant to me. Alexander Kerfoot to score when it matters. Unbelievable. No, he's that irrelevant to me. Nick Kerfoot, I just called him. Do you do you trust Dennis Malgin to score when it matters? No. Pierre Engvall? No. In the past, Mikheyev? No. 
No, you can't. You can't rely on them. You can't rely on them. Nick Paul got the job done for Tampa Bay. Nick Paul and Vasilevsky. So, when you're left with that much cap and you make mistakes like like Matt Murray, you sign Muzzin, who, who's regressed significantly. You know, even the little guy, even the little contracts, you know, Justin Hall, 2 mil. You bring in a Nick Ritchie, 2.75. You know, you bring in these kind of deals, Kerfoot 3.5. When you bring them in and they don't perform, it's it's troubling because your big boys aren't performing and your depth isn't performing and your whole team's not performing and you're left with an exit. So at the end of the day, I think what the Leafs need to do is just a complete regime change. And let me be clear about something. I don't have all the answers. I really don't. I don't know what they should do. I don't know what I don't I don't know if they should trade one of the big forwards, one of the big four. What are you getting back? How like how are you gonna maneuver around it? You know? Do you go for futures and then make a signing in the offseason to you know, you you get you get more depth in your organization, and then you make a signing. Like I don't know who would be available, but you go out, you sign a, a couple of good players, build out your depth. Like I don't know, I don't know how you fix this. I really don't, and I think the only way out of this is just patience. Um, bring in a new regime and patience. I, I think the current regime sh- shows that they can't get the job done. They can't get the job done, right? So, new regime, patience, and you just wait for the cap to go up to make these contracts more stomachable. And you can bring it, like, I, apparently it might go up $4 million this season. And if it does, that's $4 million, you can add another impact player right there. It's not an impact player, but somebody that could that could play. And there's a lot of UFAs on the Leafs. I hope we don't re-sign Michael Bunting for 3.25. I think that's a lot. For somebody you could just go out and find for cheaper that does the same thing. You know, if you could find a, a good, solid, hardworking player that could chip in offensively to play with Matthews, that shouldn't cost you 3.25. But listen... I know here in Leafs and Leafs land, Leafs Nation, we're all disappointed. We're really disappointed. And it's getting very frustrating. And I it just something needs to be done. It just needs to be done. Thanks for watching. Um Yeah. Tired of seeing my team lose. Honestly, I'm 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 sick of it.